Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story. It will grip you and have you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to binge episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. This story today will be something a little different as we look at two separate players at once who become very intertwined with each other until the very end. So with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. Now for reference, we will only be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And before we start, I want to thank you for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. For only a few bucks a month on Patreon, you can pick what videos I make, watch all this channel's content early, chat with other fans of the show, and even get exclusive videos every month. With that, let's jump into another epic story. 39 days, 16 people, one survivor. JT and Steven, players who hail from Alabama and New York, are both castaways on Survivor's 18th season, Survivor Token Chains. By the time this season is done, they will have experienced some high highs and some low lows, but it is always with the other person at their side. So what happens this season that makes this duo so iconic that they are still referenced in modern Survivor as the template of what people want in a partner? Let's find out. Survivor Token Chains starts off with both tribes traveling in a truck, and we hear some first impressions before the players ever get out to talk to each other. For example, our main character Steven says that Sandy, the older lady that's on their tribe, should be an easy first target. We have the strung out old lady, and it is sort of encouraging to have her because you know you're not gonna be the first to go. But funnily enough, Sandy says the same thing about Steven and thinks she can boss him around pretty easily. The root tall boy, I think he's like a geek. I think I should be able to lead him around real easy. Steven is on the Jalapau tribe, which is the red tribe, and the other tribe is black and they are Timbira. Right away, Jeff says, let's play a fun game. It's called, you get to hike four hours to camp, but before you do that, you need to vote for someone to not join you on this journey. The older lady, Sandy, is voted out of Jalapau and she is mad, which is funny considering what she just said on the truck. Sandy, you can't be happy about I'm this. I'm pissed. I am so pissed. Obviously, I didn't know it was going to be like this. As it turns out, contrary to what most of the players thought, Sandy is not out of the game, but instead gets a helicopter ride to camp instead of having to hike the four hours. On that long trek, Steven's personality really shines when he has a wardrobe malfunction. Yeah, now, this from the water. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My ass is really. <laughs> Got some food hanging out on the first day. You know what? This is going to be nice for the ladies from back home. But while on that hike, we quickly learn who JT is while simultaneously seeing him help his tribe read a compass correctly. I'm JT, I'm 24 years old, and I'm from Sampson, Alabama. I manage a Black Angus cattle ranch. I'm in hot weather every day, so I'm accustomed to the weather and mosquitoes, things of that nature. I know I'm gonna be good at catching fish, and I know I'm gonna be good at providing, but that'll also put me out in front of everybody else as a threat eventually. So the biggest challenge for me is going to be fitting in with the people. Steven says that his first impression of JT is a net negative for him because he is pessimistic that these two will ever be able to work together moving forward. When I saw at least one sort of good old fashioned southern boy, I thought I'm a little bit screwed. Don't really see us connecting on too many levels. I don't know how much he's going to like the anxious New York Jew. Having not even arrived at camp yet and already ruling people out in such a small cast is not a good idea for your game. Not much else is shown of JT prior to the immunity challenge, but due to no fault of his own, they lose and now they have to vote someone out. Back at camp, Carolina is whining a lot about how the shelter isn't finished yet, and mind you, she was the weakest one in the challenge by far. JT says if she wants the shelter done, then he has a suggestion. Carolyn starts talking about is how we need to finish stuff around camp. She's more than welcome to take her ass and finish the shelter herself. At Tribal Council, Carolina is voted out in a 7 to 1 landslide. Carolina, the tribe has spoken.
out. And that is it for the premiere of Survivor Token Chains. A lot of events took place this episode, and yet despite that, the show still carved out time for us to get to know who JT is and see him leading his tribe, not only on the trek, but at camp building the shelter, and he was the strongest one in the challenge. With how much talk there is at Jalapau about voting out tribe members who are not going to help them win immunity challenges, which is why Carolina was sent home, JT is not in any immediate danger. What we did learn is that he thinks Sandy is an easy target, which was proven correct. He ripped the back of his pants and took it in stride and is pessimistic about himself and JT ever connecting. He was on the right side of the vote, but it would be nice to know more about him here soon so we can connect with him. Hopefully that will happen moving forward. Episode two begins with Jalapau feeling hungry, real hungry. Joe says, let's eat some termites, which him and Spencer seem really into. And Steven pretends like it is great, but clearly he's just pretending and just being a part of the team. Later on, a revelation happens about fellow Jalapau member Taj. As it turns out, she is married to legendary running back Eddie George. If you know football, you know this guy. Let's put it that way. Pretty much everyone is blown away by this fact, except I absolutely have no idea who Eddie George is. So while Everybody around me is freaking out. I'm feeling like an absolute idiot. JT is blown away and realizes that this is great for him since now others will realize that Taj does not need the million dollars and the title of sole survivor. I've got a completely different outlook on Taj. Her husband's a very famous football player. So yeah, she's probably got a lot more money than I do. I hate to judge anybody by how much money they have, but I know I definitely need the million dollars more than Todd does. It is time for the immunity challenge, and while JT does an epic fake out to get a point for his tribe, it all comes down to the last showdown, and... <laughs> After that epic winning shot by Steven back at camp, we learn that JT has taken the leadership role at Jalapau. And what Steven said in episode one has turned out to not be true at all, for the better. JT has definitely emerged as our tribe leader. And honestly, I'm thrilled to be out here with him. He's like no one I would have ever met back at home. And I think we're getting to know each other, which I thought is sort of surprising because he's the Alabama country boy. He is Tom Sawyer. And I am the uh, angsty city boy. He might just be seducing me with his pretty country ways, but uh, I'm smitten. It's nice seeing Steven being willing to change his mind on someone when he was originally pessimistic about them. We move on to episode three where Jalapau is out fishing, utilizing the gear they won at that previous challenge, and we see Steven catch a fish. This is maybe the first fish I've ever caught. The cut from Steven catching a small fish to JT catching a bigger one is one of those hint hint editing moments from the storytellers. Anyways, the next morning everyone slept pretty well, especially Sandy. She is uh... Well, keep in mind that what she says here is while she is staring directly at JT. I know I'm a sex kid this morning, there's no doubt in my mind. Oh dear, oh boy. <laughs> well then, at the immunity challenge, the tribes have to put together this large staircase puzzle, and JT leads Jalapau on how to do it, and... JT's across, Spencer's across, Jalapau wins immunity! <laughs> so we move on to episode four, where we learn that not only does JT and Steven connect, but so does Taj and Steven, and she views him as a great guy. Now, I need to talk to Steven because I know I could trust him. He's kind of like the nerdy, shy guy who just wants to help everybody, and I know that I can depend on him in the long run. For the past two episodes, Taj has been spending time at Exile Island with Brendan. Long story short, those two conjured up a potentially game-changing alliance that involves two Jalapau members and two Timbira members teaming up once the merge hits to blindside everyone. This could be huge and Taj wants Steven in on it. Do you want to be a part of the biggest upset on Survivor history? Yes, I do. Okay. They made a pact on Exile Island to stick with each other, stay in the game as long as we can and look out for each other once we get to the merge. So I might have just stumbled ass backwards into a huge alliance. Will this pan out? Who knows, but it is an exciting prospect. Episode four begins with a reward challenge that sees three players from each tribe having to shoulder a bunch of weight put on by the other team. And as of this time, Rupert from season seven holds the record for most weight held. So here with JT. Atta boy, atta boy Jet, yeah. atta boy Jet. Woo. Yeah, JT. Strongest man alive. Yeah, JT. JT drops JT. out after holding 220 pounds, tying Rupert's record from the Pearl awesome, Islands. Baby. 
due in part to that Herculean effort, Jalapau wins reward, and their reward has JT and Joe getting to go to the Timbira tribe's camp to steal two items of their choosing. JT debates on taking both bags of beans, but is worried that if he does this, then a tribe swap would inevitably happen, and then he would force to be on Timbira with no food. I think it's a very smart idea not to take both sacks of beans because you have to look forward in this game. There could be a switch at any time. And if I was to end up over there on the Timbira tribe, with no beans because I just stole both sacks, I'd be pissed. Upon arriving back at Jalapau, pretty much everyone understands the decision made except Sandy. She thinks he was dumb to not take all of their food. But then again, Sandy has been painted as crazy since the season first began, so what she says here doesn't hold a lot of credibility. Jalapau goes on to lose immunity, so back at camp, the scrambling begins. Who will go next? What is important for us is seeing how JT and Steven being depicted as the decision makers for their tribe, and they are debating between Sandy and Sydney. At Tribal Council, JT is under fire because apparently him and Sydney have been flirting, but Steven has JT's back when he says that, uh, I know JT and Sydney have been flirting, but you should really look at Joe and Sydney because uh, they're on a whole other level. First of all, I should say that the big flirty relationship has not been mentioned yet, which is between Sydney and Joe. They flirt maybe a little more than JT and Sydney flirt. And it is true that we did see Sydney scratching JT's back earlier, but her and Joe are on a whole other level of flirtation. But that is all not as important as Sandy being voted out in a five to one to one vote. Sandy, the tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. Episode five sees a weird but humorous opening as it literally begins with Steven and Taj doing something noisy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Right there is just itchy. <laughs> Ah, yes. I've brought such pleasure to a woman before. Oh my God, you doing it, baby. After that uh, moment together, Tosh has acquired enough clues from Exile Island to find the hidden immunity idol at their camp, which her and Steven do together. And she even lets him hold the idol for now since she doesn't have any pockets and he does so he can actually hide it. However, in confessional, Steven gets a bit dark with his strategic thoughts here. I mean, I'm delighted to have the item, but you know, as long as it's in my possession, I'm gonna try to keep it in my possession. Theoretically and ostensibly, it is mine. I'm the one wearing the idol around my neck. Then at the reward challenge, Jalapau wins, and Brennan gets picked to go to Exile Island, so he drags with him. And who are you choosing from Jalapau to go with you? Steven. What? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Not this While on Exile Island, Brennan and Steven discuss the Exile Alliance and Steven reveals to Brennan that him and Taj found the idol at their camp and Brennan says, great, I found the idol at the Timbira camp. So now the Exile Alliance holds every idol in the game. Despite how quickly Taj, Brennan and Sierra seem to have bonded, Steven is a bit more hesitant, rightly so given the information he knows. He says, sure, Brendan is smart but I barely know the guy and I don't want to put all of my eggs in this one alliance basket that hasn't proven anything yet. It's hard to trust someone who, you know, I've known him for five minutes. I can't place my entire faith in the game on him. So I might keep this two tribe alliance in the back of my head as something that might be there, but I can't place my entire faith on this four person alliance. This is a big moment for JT as we learn something important about his home life. My mom has always told me she loved me like three times my whole life. Is that it there? Oh. I almost started crying. So let's try yeah, I almost lost the <laughs> Back at camp, we learn a little bit about Spencer, namely that he is gay and he is hiding this from his tribe because he believes that people like JT would judge him based on the stereotype of a country boy that JT fits into. What Spencer doesn't know is that you really shouldn't judge JT by the cover, as Steven has learned so far. At the immunity challenge, JT goes beast mode. The Wayne tribe needs five points to snag immunity, and JT scores four of these points all by himself for Jalapau. He only needs one other person on Jalapau to score one point to win it all. However, Taj lets him down by not really defending Brendan at all. And Spencer continually disappoints as well as he allows Timbir to come back into the game and tie it up. But as JT goes to score yet another point, this happens. JT snags another one for Jalapau. JT has lost a tooth. JT! Wait, JT, did you just throw it? Yeah. For the first time ever in the history of Survivor, a point was scored while losing a tooth. 
But remember when I said Spencer let JT down earlier? Well, it is so bad that Timbira does end up winning immunity due to it, and JT wants Spencer gone next. I'm doing everything I can to win. I mean, broke the back half of my front tooth off, but it just seemed like some people wasn't giving it all. I don't want to get rid of anyone, but it's got to be Spencer. Spencer is viewed as someone who did not give it his all in the challenge since he was responsible for Timbira catching back up, and JT wants him out now. But despite this, Taj thinks she could be going home and is clearly scared. She has an outburst at camp that Steven makes a very smart read on. I'm, I'm hot today, so I don't give a f nobody thinks about me today. Everybody can kiss my ass. I think she's just scared. I mean, you know, at least she's an emotional outburst, but it's totally honest. In a bold move prior to Tribal Council, Spencer asks JT who does he want voted out next, and JT says he has two options, one of them including... Where do you think you go? I don't know. You can, you can tell me. I think you were Taj. If JT didn't have control of his tribe socially, that could have been his downfall. But he does, and Spencer is gone in a 5-1 to one vote. Spencer, tribe is spoken. Time for you to go. Like episode 6 is a recap episode that has no bearing on the main story, so we move on to episode 7 where JT says he hasn't lied to anyone on Jalapal all game. And heck, he sure hopes no one on Jalapal is lying to him right now either. After all, it is hard for him to be mean to people. Hopefully everyone's got a good outlook on me. I am a country boy, you know, and it's hard for me to be mean to people. Depending on your definition of mean, that fight with Spencer and then saying to his face that he could be gone next may be mean, but it all depends on your perspective. However, after JT says he hopes no one is lying to him, we then cut immediately to Taj and Steven, where Taj wants to tell JT about the idol she found, but Steven fears her doing this might make a connection between them that no longer needs him. So he tells her, no, you shouldn't do that but sells it as something that helps her instead. I'm gonna tell JT I do have the idol. JT? Yeah. So what does telling him about it accomplish? Taj came and said, I wanna tell JT about the idol. Until JT knows, I'm basically controlling the information flow between Taj and JT. And to the extent possible, I wanna remain that bridge because if they connect, you know, I might become a less essential part of the loop. Jalapau goes on to lose reward, and Joe from their tribe gets sent to Exile Island. Steven and Taj realize, oh crap, he will have the same clues we do, and will easily know where to look for the idol. So, we have to make a fake one. Taj does just that. Pretty well, in fact, as Joe is indeed tricked by what they did. <laughs> the hidden immunity idol. Don't skirt the issue, try lifting the veil, here it is. When Taj made the fake idol, she used the real one as inspiration, but when she went to rehide that real one, she didn't do a very good job, as JT accidentally stumbles upon it and says, hey Steven, look what I found, and Steven completely botches his reaction. I just walked over there and picked up the bag, and I looked at it, and I said, damn, there's immunity idol. I know, it's right there. When JT found the idol, I was thinking, what the heck do I say? That's why I said, I know. And, you know, I don't think I had the appropriate amount of shock on my face. Thankfully, JT doesn't call Steven out for saying, I know, because JT could have asked why Steven knew and didn't tell him. Steven tells Taj to go for it and tell him, which she does. And this actually results in JT reacting pretty well and them all agreeing to be the final three. We're going we're to sorry. merge. We're going. we're going to the merge, we're going to the end. <laughs> yeah, we're going to the At the immunity challenge, this is do or die for JT. He knows that they need to win to help their merge chances, so once again he takes the leadership role and puts himself in the spot to slingshot the three tiles together puzzle pieces. However, Tyson on Timbira does a better job and gives his tribe a comfortable head start, and when everyone notices that JT is now falling behind, Tyson offers him a bit of a sarcastic encouragement. Do you want to keep going? Yeah, I think I got it, Jeff. I'll come over and do it if you want. <laughs> that lead Tyson gave Timbira was crucial as Jalapau goes on to lose immunity in large part thanks to JT. Back at camp, JT says this really sucks because he was planning on winning this whole game. And now he fears he can't do that with them potentially entering the merge down four to six. He is then approached by Joe and Sydney to vote out Taj, but JT has no desire to do that to her. So at Tribal Council, Sydney is voted out instead in a three to two vote. Sydney, Tribe has spoken. 
episode eight starts and the tribe is feeling downtrodden. If a merge were to happen, they are struggling since Timbira holds a six to four lead over them. It is made even worse when observing Joe's knee and seeing how swollen and red it really is. Look how hot it is. Yeah. Oh, it was all the way out here yesterday, and now it's just right there. As it turns out, if you recall back in episode 5 when I said Joe injured his knee, since then it has gotten infected and pretty gross. However, Jalapal then gets tree mail that sounds a lot like yet another reward challenge, but Steven thinks it might be something else. I think it's a merge. I think it's a reward challenge. Let's take bets. I'll eat your parts of the feast if it's a merge. No, no let's I'm just win, kidding, whatever right. it is. Whatever it is, we'll win. Sure enough, Steven is correct, and the merge does indeed happen with a massive feast to go along with it. Our biggest hope was that today was the merge feast. Less the merge than the merge feast. Jalapao is freaking hungry. Sure enough, just like JT feared, with the merge happening now, it means that Jalapao is down four to six, and it doesn't look great when you consider one of their members has a badly injured knee. But a vote is a vote. While everyone is celebrating and feasting, JT asks everyone, what do they do for a living? So everybody's got these history secrets and stuff. I don't know nothing. I'm it's a poor cattle farmer. And a rocket scientist, though. Uh, yeah, and a rocket and scientist. A scientist. I showed that because he is planting the seeds of being someone who doesn't have money, which will undoubtedly make a difference if he were sitting at the final two, maybe even next to Taj. It is time to pick the tribe name, and Coach of the Old Timpira tribe asks if anyone knows any Portuguese. Turns out he's asking this because he knows the word in Portuguese. He's just seeing if anyone else does. Steven says he has a name for the tribe, and uh, pretty much no one else is on board with it. Anybody know Portuguese? I looked up Thank Will to overcome and that was dingus i guess d-i-n-g-u-s in portuguese yeah i don't know about dingus man i mean that sounds like a good meaning but dingus sounds a little bit too crazy i like can't hear jeff saying come on in dingus <laughs> I'm, I'm in. I think it has a nice ring to it. They end up deciding on Forza, which is a misspelled Portuguese word that Coach suggested. Back at the merge camp, Steven isn't feeling so hot, and frankly, neither is the rest of the old Jalapau tribe, and it is clear by now that by living at the old Timbira camp, and of course, Timbira having the numbers, that they are in charge. The Timbira people are definitely running the show. It's definitely intimidating to go into the merge down in numbers. They can pick us off if they want, you know? We're dependent on their good graces. So even if we make allies with them, those allies are in the dominant position. And upon arriving at the old Tim Beer camp, the new Forza camp, JT is blown away. Now we're walking into the old Tim Beer camp, and first of all, we come up to a little doghouse shelter, and I'm like, what is this? You know, I mean, I don't know how it was still standing. I want to preface everything that is about to happen over these next two episodes with you knowing that this is all super crucial. JT charmed Jalapau's pants off, and he will be quickly charming all of the old Timbira as well. Everyone who will be on the jury is still in this game right now, and we are about to hear from them all. First, let's start with Coach, who says he loves JT and definitely wants to work with him. I knew the first time that I, that I looked at JT. I saw the cowboy boots open honest face and i said to myself he is a good old boy and we're kindred spirits we both love the outdoors i think that we're both warriors remember when previously jt said he hadn't lied to any jalapal members well he will pretty much stick true to that but when it comes to the old timbira all bets are off right away coach asked jt if taj has the hidden immunity idol which obviously he does know about but he says so you swear to me that taj does not have it i don't know if she's got it or not if she does, there's two items. I've seen cracks right away. I had some ideas before, I ever, before there ever was a merge. It's hard to keep six people from different walks of life to stick together when they hate each other. But as it turns out, the old Timbira is not as close-knit as Jalapau suspected. In fact, there is a clear divide in the group with Coach, Tyson, and Debbie wanting to work with JT to vote out Brendan, Sierra, and Aaron. I want you to think about an alliance. Stephen and JT. We've definitely found inroads into Timbira. This is clearly a very fractured tribe because there's no strong bonds and sense of place. So there's a lot of power dynamics at play 
that are very easy to explore. The next morning, we see JT fishing with Tyson, and he is pleasantly surprised at how well he connects with him, which is then followed by Tyson giving him a hug, something rarely if ever seen by Tyson. We then cut to Tyson talking to Debbie, and immediately Tyson says, I trust JT. He's a good dude. That is a straight shooter. We can trust him, no problem. Which then leads to Debbie saying, yeah, you know what? I like JT and Steven as well. Coach talked to JT last night really good. Okay. JT's a straight shooter, good guy. I like JT and Steven both. And they're both straight under- shooters. As mentioned before, Brendan is the target by the old Timbera and heck, Jalapal doesn't really care who goes as long as it isn't them. All of the planning to get Brendan out is for naught though as Joe is medevaced because of his leg injury and Jalapal is now down six to three. He can't continue. What? They said the risk of him staying longer was too serious. That if they left him longer in the game, that this could get worse. We then move on to episode nine, which sees JT talking to Aaron in the same spot. He talked to coach and Tyson. And while with Aaron, she says multiple times that she feels very much burned by the old Timbera and doesn't like them at all. And she is essentially a free agent. Wherever the majority of the votes are going, that's who she's going to vote with. She even says multiple times that she likes Jalapau more than Timbera, and it isn't even close. At the reward challenge, everyone is split up into three groups, but the group with JT, Brendan, and Debbie wins. So with that, they get to go on a white water rafting adventure. JT says this is great because he has never done this before in his entire life and then we hear from Brendan. The reward was so much fun. The pure joy that was on JT's face to see how much he just soaks it up and appreciates it. What a great soul. It's so sincere, it's so real, like all qualities that you want in people that surround you, or at least I do. So clearly, Brendan is falling a bit in love with JT, but by the time they are done with their trip, I kid you not, Brendan wants to lose the game and help JT get to the final two and win instead. This is not hyperbolic at all, and this is a first in the history of Survivor. I always kind of define winning in a lot of my life of saying, like, I'm going to be number one. If I take JT in the finals with me, he's going to beat me. I know it's crazy, but for me, winning in this game is about getting to an outcome at the end of the game, which is going to satisfy me. If he wins it, that's like me winning this game. How do I get him to the finals? I don't know. This is the next step I need to wrap my head around. I sat in that shelter and did not sleep at all, just running through all the different scenarios about how do I get JT to the finals. Wow, who doesn't love JT at this point? Seriously. I guess Sierra hasn't said anything yet, but then we cut to Brendan talking to Sierra about JT, and what do you know? We had the awesome time. He's such a good dude, dude. Debbie had such a good time with him. He is. He's one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life. That is now every single person of the old Timbira already falling head over heels for JT, except for Aaron. She simply said she liked him and the rest of Jalapau more than her old tribe. We heard Steven say he was smitten with JT in the pre-merge, and heck, they are like peanut butter and jelly with how they go hand in hand. So it could be argued that maybe Taj is the only one left who has not blatantly said she loves JT. But speaking of that, JT, I think I put back here to save you. He's such a good dude. I know, I, I, he is. I, I, I love him to death, and I don't I, want him to go. No, I agree. Episode 9 sees Steven getting sent to Exile Island all by himself. Now, all season, when someone has gone, they have had a partner to go with, but not anymore. On Exile, Steven says he has never made fire at camp. Not that he has never tried, but when he did try, he failed pretty epically. So, his goal at Exile is to turn the tide and do it successfully. How about that? Damn, I can build a fire. How about that? Success for Steven. He went from ripping his pants on day one to reveal his underwear to now surviving on his own with no shelter and making his own fire. That's some real growth. After conquering exile, Steven returns to camp and coach gives him some high praise. No, I mean, it was for me, it was a big step. I'm proud of you. Really I'm very proud of you. Wizard is coming into the we man missed your of the poetry. Mouth. Despite it being days later and everyone having more time to think, the plan has evolved, but the end result is unchanged. Vote out Brendan, but split the votes on Sierra just in case he plays the idol. I've already got it set up, so four votes go to Brendan, three votes go to Sierra. If Brendan gets wind of it, uses his idol, Sierra's gone. Brendan's gone in three days from that. In case you are unaware, I haven't mentioned it so far in this story since it is a not factor, but during the pre-merge, the players who were going to Exile Island formed a cross-tribal alliance consisting of Taj, 
Brendan, Sierra, and Steven. Now that they are all together, they pull in JT to join them. However, JT lies to Brendan. Long story short, the Exile Alliance is already in the process of falling apart due to bad communication, and nothing will really happen with them. Later on, JT is talking with Steven one-on-one, -on -one, where he catches Steven up on what Brendan said about throwing his game for JT, and I think Steven speaks for all of us when he says, He said he wants me in the finals. Why would he want that? He likes me a lot. That's crazy. I do need to mention something else crazy that happened this episode, as at the beginning of it, Coach told everyone this story. Now, it didn't have anything to do with Steven, but since him and JT talk about it, it becomes relevant. This story the coach tells is about the time he was kayaking in the Amazon and is kidnapped by the locals who tie him to a stake and beat him. Almost no one believes it, and in Coach's story, I do a dramatic reading of the whole thing. But for this story, it is important to know that Coach was fairly credible before, but after this tale, everyone is questioning if he's even legit or not. Yeah, he's crazy. <laughs> he is somewhat crazy. I, mean, I think that story about him being captured on the Amazon. That's just hard to believe. That is pretty hard to believe. At Tribal Council, Jeff asks about JT and Taj, says that this guy is a triple threat of perfection, really painting an unintentional target on his back. JT is fast, he's a lovable person. He's like a triple threat because you just can't find anything wrong with him. In the end, the plan works perfectly as Brandon is voted out in a four to three to two split vote. Brandon, job is spoken. It is episode 10, and you may be asking yourself, what the heck happened to the Exile Alliance? They just voted out Brendan. Long story short, Taj nor Brendan communicated clearly with each other, and this caused distrust along with a seemingly better offer from Coach Tyson and Debbie. This is not a big deal for Steven, who is really friends with Taj and not at all with Brendan and Sierra, but let's move on to the reward challenge where Steven loses and JT sends him to Exile to make sure there are no new idols since Brendan and the idol he possessed is gone. However, at Exile, there are no new idols, just another clue to the idols that have already been found. And now Steven has to suffer living there with absolutely no purpose. I'm here for nothing. Back at camp, it is important to know that Tyson won the first two individual immunity challenges following the merge, and he came super close to winning the third that happened in this episode. So Steven has a wild thought. Let's just vote out Tyson, which is incredibly risky since he is part of this new alliance. But Taj, Aaron, and JT all agree. I think we might just take out Tyson. We might not get another chance. That's true. That's true. I mean, this is like the time. It's like opportunities knocking. What the hell are we, you know? I know. Steven's basic thought here is that he wants Tyson gone to avoid one player going on a crazy immunity run that gets them to the end of the game. And he says this happens every season, which is untrue, but we do know where he's getting at with saying this. And he says, instead of Tyson, let's make it someone else. Keep that in mind for later. It's quite prophetic. It happens. It happens every season someone goes on a run. Let's make it you. <laughs> While discussing whether to vote out Tyson or Sierra next, we learn that JT is not very fond of her at all as he says this. Sierra is a lying bitch. I hate her. I hate her too. I, I want to get her away from my face too. A rare villainous moment for our beloved hero. So she must really suck to get that reaction from him according to the story we're seeing here. Coach then talks to JT and says we are good to vote out Sierra and keep the Warrior Alliance strong, right? Which has JT saying, of course, as he shakes Coach's hand knowing that this is not going to happen. I know I can trust you and that's so important to me, man. You have my word. Thank you. It's really gonna crush Coach. At Tribal Council, Coach is unintentionally setting himself up for some heartbreak as when he talks about JT, he says this is a man of honor who he can trust no matter what. The first time I looked in JT's eyes and I shook his hand, I knew that where he comes from, that meant something. And I see honesty and trust, and I see a warrior in battle. That's somebody, obviously, that I respect and I believe 100% when he tells me something. Tyson is blindsided in a five to three vote totally betraying Coach and Debbie as well. Tyson, the tribe's spoken. Go. Episode 11 starts with Coach and Debbie in a haze of confusion. They pretend like, wow, that was a brilliant move you guys made when you blindsided us. But Steven doesn't like this because of course they're being disingenuous. It was a good move, guys. And I'm glad, I appreciate you not telling yeah. me. Bold and brilliant tonight, guys. So basically anything we had done was the greatest thing that had ever been accomplished. You know, what a tremendous blindside. 
It worried me a little bit because I would rather have an honest blowout than have people smiling, saccharine smiles at me and you know plotting something else. This turns out to be more true than he knows as when Coach and Debbie are alone. Debbie is raging mad about being blindsided and says they need to do something about JT, Steven, and Taj because those three could take over this game, meaning she wants to get them out. Steven goes on to win the reward challenge and he gets to pick two people to join him, so he chooses JT and Taj. Coach says, that's cool that he picked them, he still trusts Steven. While on said reward, the Jalapal 3 talk and Steven says, we should keep Coach around since he is a weak player in this game, but Debbie is a strong threat. Our next move is obviously Sierra, right? Uh-huh. Because Coach is really secure right now with us. I think so. You know, he's the weakest in every aspect right now, so to keep him around is to make some more sense. Upon returning back from the reward, something big went down while they were gone because Coach talks to JT and tells him how Sierra and Debbie tried to reform the Timbira Alliance, but he said no. While Sierra talks to Steven and says Coach and Debbie tried to reform the Timbira Alliance, but she said no. Sounds pretty similar, doesn't it? Steven isn't sure who is telling the truth since both seem so adamant that they are the one telling the truth. According to Sierra, Coach and Debbie are plotting against me and JT, and Coach is saying it's Sierra that can't be trusted right now. So I can't get a real sense of who is telling the truth which makes me suspicious of the three of them. Now, not long after that, to prove a point, Sierra picks a fight with Coach and Debbie and says, admit it, you are the one lying, not me. Which Coach and Debbie just deny, deny, deny. Through all of their bickering and drama, Steven susses out that the truth is with Sierra, and he is right. I think Sierra just caught Coach in a lie. Yeah. It sounds like they actually approached her about, let's take out Jala Powder, and she they... said no. Despite Sierra telling the truth and Steven knowing it, it is decided that keeping Coach and Debbie happy is better for his end game than siding with Sierra. So she is voted out in a four to two to one vote. Sierra, the job is spoken. Time to go. Episode 12 begins and apparently Debbie is driving JT and Steven up the wall since they both say how much she bugs them with Steven even doing a pretty funny impression of her. Hey man, you doing the show this Monday? Is it gonna rain tonight? I think it's clearing up. JT. The reward challenge this episode is the survivor auction, and Steven wins a bid on a covered item, and so far, all the items have been great, including the covered ones. So what does Steven win? Chicken hearts. Ah! All right, I love chicken hearts. This is big. Are they any good? <laughs> Talk about making lemonade out of lemons and notice the spooky music that accompanied all of that. Just like when he ripped his pants in episode one with the making lemonade out of lemons thing. But the biggest event of this auction is when Taj wins her loved ones a visit. And by choosing to go to exile with her husband, everyone else gets to have their loved ones back at camp. Steven's loved one is his brother and... I just like gave him a big hug and maybe it was maybe one of like the most just biggest, sincerest, like warmest hugs we've ever shared, like if not the most. We see JT with his little sister and she cries when she sees him and he does his best to contain his outer emotions. While she is there, he shows her one of the snacks he has been eating and offers her one to which she is disgusted by. What is that? Corn Jatoba. You can make tortillas out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here, try it. After the loved ones leave, we learn what exactly JT's philosophy is when it comes to talking to and strategizing with Coach, and actually it's quite simple. Since JT knows he is many steps ahead and Coach is a simple man at heart, he just tells him whatever he wants to hear since Coach continually pushes for Taj to be voted out and JT knows that is not happening anytime soon. I feel like I'm really a, a few steps ahead of Coach when it comes to strategy. I tell him what he wants to hear at this point to make it look like I'm on the same page he's on. When in turn, you know, we're not really on the same page right now. Debbie decides it is time to go hard on flipping on Coach. The writing is on the wall for him and her, and she wants to have no part of that. So she offers JT and Steven a final three deal, where if they take her to the final three, she will just let them go to final travel, even if she accidentally wins final immunity. She says she will just hand final immunity over to JT. She'll just roll right on over for them. A lucrative offer to be sure, but Steven isn't too sure if he can trust her so he may need to vote her out instead. You cannot really trust anybody's promises out here. I don't know Debbie that well. I've known her for 10 days. I don't know her personal relationship with God or what her swears to God mean. She's throwing Coach under the bus right now and they've been tied since day one. You gotta watch out for people like that. 
this is a lucrative offer, but definitely a hard one to believe that is real, right? They haven't known her that long after all, but what else is new? She wouldn't be the first player to want to throw everything away to benefit JT. Coach then comes to talk to JT and Steven, where he lays another editing hint hint as to what we should be expecting as an audience. You guys realize I'm just going to tell you this right now? You guys, I'm just going to throw a reality check on you. One of us three is going to win it. At the immunity challenge, it is a crazy one that sees Steven falling way behind. Essentially, each player has to navigate a tough obstacle course to get to the end to memorize a series of symbols to make an equation. Pretty much every player will need to look at it multiple times to get it right, except Steven. He nails this all in one shot. Steven is right. Steven wins immunity. Oh my God, I want immunity. I can't even believe it. Yeah, I made each symbol have it be a number, so I had plus is one, divided by is four, times is three. And I know the brain can remember a seven digit number, because that's why phone numbers are seven digits. So I divided it into two numbers. Um, and just remember those two numbers. If you ever wondered how smart Steven is, well, there you go. Back at camp, he is pretty happy with how things have gone since the merge. Sure, they lost show, but despite being down six to three, Timbira has fractured and self-destructed, and the Chalapau three have been able to take advantage of this pretty easily. Him and JT even talk about how easy it has been, and they are blown away by how all of this is playing out. No one wants to vote us out. I don't know why not, neither. They all know that we're sort of one of things. Everyone not wants to be on our good side. At Tribal Council, Jeff prompts Coach to speak positively about everyone, and with that comes a high honor for Steven. Steven, you know, he's a warrior to me because he has gone from a boy who likes to read books about adventure to a man who is living an adventure and excelling at it without any complaints. Not only has he been called the wizard, the man of the mountain, but now he is a warrior. It is time to vote and Debbie is eliminated in a four to one to one split. Debbie, the tribe has spoken. Okay. Episode 13 begins and Coach was not in on that last vote. Steven and JT play it off like they saved him because Debbie was gunning for Coach, which is half true. She did say let's vote off Coach, but that is not why they voted her out. Coach is absolutely relieved by all this though and buys this lie hook, line, and sinker. You know who wrote your name down, right? What? Debbie wanted us to send you home, Matt. I was like, wow. JT, Aaron, and Taj, and Steven mounted a counterattack against Debbie to save me. You have to be asking yourself, how does Coach trust JT at this point? He's just been blindsided by him twice. But that is just the power of JT's social game. No one cares that he's a threat despite knowing that he's a threat. They just want him to like them. At this point in the game, everyone has been to Exile Island, some more than others, as Taj has gone four times and Steven has gone three. Only Coach and JT have avoided it who are still left in the game. And at this point, there may only be one trip left to the island happening and coach does not want it to be him all of a sudden coach has 1000 reasons that he's telling jt and steven as to why he can't go all of them either seem made up or exaggerated and steven isn't buying any of it while jt says who cares coach is being voted off next anyways jt and i are eager to send coach to exile he has been so skittish about it he has been selling out everyone trying to get them to go to exile before him coach he's just really scared to go to exile and such an adventurous soulless coach shouldn't really be scared to go to exile so, you know, I'm, I'm ready to test him and uh, also we're planning on sending Coach home in the next Tribal Council. Now at the reward challenge, JT wins, but it was close as Coach was on his tail the whole time. So much for his physical ailments holding him back. He sends Coach to exile, which will be very overdramatic watch coach's story video for all of that wonderfulness and jt picks steven to go with him on the reward now on that reward we do get a real aw shucks kind of moment as jt tells us he has always dreamed about being on a private plane i just really soaked it up that's always been a dream of mine to have a private plane or to be able to fly on one like that and it's really awesome they finally arrive and it is luxurious. Now you probably wouldn't take one look at JT and think to yourself, now there's a man who enjoys good showers. But uh, for JT, they can be pretty wild. Oh, oh man, can't get enough of the soap. 34 days, I have not washed my nasty tail. Oh. That night, him and Steven raise a glass to celebrate their accomplishments so far, and hey, they are now up on Timbira 3-2. Who would have saw this coming, with Coach and Aaron still not wanting to work with each other? What luck. Here it is to the final two. Cheers. 
to the final two in this game. Final two. At the immunity challenge, Coach returns from his crazy, over dramatic exile trip, and Steven is the only person shown to be empathetic towards Coach. In fact, when Coach goes on to lose this immunity challenge to JT in a long, hard fought battle, Steven is once again the nicest to him. Oh my god, man. Jesus, are you okay, man? You did awesome. <laughs> Back at camp, Coach asks JT if Aaron is going and whether any surprises will be happening at Tribal Council or not. Of course, JT and Steven just tells him exactly what he wants to hear. I mean, I'm just asking, right? I mean, there's not going to be any surprises tonight, right? No. I'm done with the surprises at Tribal, man. At Tribal Council, Coach is surprised in a 3-2 to two vote that actually sees JT voting with Coach, but he knew Coach was being voted out no matter what, so that's why he did it. Coach, the Tribe has spoken. It is finale time. JT versus Steven versus Taj versus Aaron. Who will go to the final two and convince the jury that they are worthy of the title of Soul Survivor? Let's find out. Right away, JT takes a moment to reflect upon the great accomplishment of the Jalapau 3. They got to the end under incredible odds, and him and Steven really led the way for that. It's hard to believe that I'm still here, final four. There's a huge feeling of accomplishment, especially for me, Steven, and Todd. The remaining three Jalapau are here in the final four together. However, danger is afoot for JT, whether he knows it or not. Right away, Steven and Todd acknowledge that if they are going to reach the final two and have a shot to win, JT has to go. You know, if JT loses immunity, dot, dot, dot. Wow. This is really the first time all game anyone's even mentioned JT as a target. So JT's neck is all of a sudden on the line, but Steven's prophetic words about someone going on an immunity run each season keep ringing true as JT secures himself his second individual immunity win. Yes. JT wins oh. immunity! I am so close. Once again, JT is safe at Tribal Council. And it seems clear that Aaron should go next. After all, Taj is part of the Jalapal 3, and to betray her would be mean. But then Steven ponders what keeping Taj would do for his game. She is a legit jury threat, and if she wins final immunity, she is likely to take JT over him to the end. Aaron we can beat for sure in the final immunity. Then we'll all then basically guaranteed the final two. How do I get to the finals and how do I win them? That's been really guiding all of my decisions. I think there's also a very good chance that Taj will take JT into the final two. Either way, Steven is right and JT says no matter what, he will stick with him. We're definitely reassuring Taj that Aaron's going home and Aaron may be going home. We're not sure what we're going to do tonight, but Steven and I are going to stick together in whatever decision we make. At Tribal Council, in a weird turn of story considering what we have seen so far, Jeff paints Steven as someone who doesn't understand how to play Survivor and has just now shown up to the game. Completely untrue, but that is the narrative being thrust upon us. I almost hope I'm not in the position to make that, that decision. Well, but you are. You have a vote. I almost feel as though it's almost like you just showed up and this is your first day here and you, you don't even know how the game is played. It is decided that Taj's threat to JT and Steven winning it all is too large and they vote her out three to one. Taj, the tribe has spoken. It's a big risk, so let's see if it pays off. After Tribal Council, we hear from JT about how hard it was to vote out Taj and how he really didn't want to betray her at all. He says the ramifications of his actions are already annoying him. I'm already suffering the consequences because Aaron is the most annoying person I know in the world and she will not shut up. The next day, Aaron is talking to Steven and says, I want you at the final two with me and he says, ditto on that, which cannot be good for JT at all. I already have my decision made if I win. I'm taking Steven with me. It's the choice that's going to give me the best chance of winning. That would be the best decision for the both of them since no one has a shot against JT. But this decision is not as easy to make as what it seems like it would be on paper. Steven is slightly afraid to win immunity because he would be in a real moral conundrum. Do I take JT to the final two? My friend, ally, you know, the person who I'm closest with in this game, or do I take Aaron, who I'm not even particularly fond of, but who I have a very good shot of winning a million dollars against. Prior to the immunity challenge, JT promises Steven that no matter what, he will take him to the final two, and Steven promises JT the same thing. At the immunity challenge, it gets intense as Aaron is the first to drop out, so it becomes JT versus Steven. Whoever wins gets to pick who they sit next to at the final tribal council. So what happens? Ah! 
Steven drops out. JT wins final immunity and a guaranteed spot yes. in the final two. Right back at camp, all those talks with Aaron start to haunt Steven as she immediately rats him out for what he said to her. And JT is slightly offended by all of this. JT then talks to Steven and essentially asks, hey, Aaron told me this thing. Is it true? Steven lies. And once again, we see he isn't very good at lying, especially when it comes to lying to JT. I mean, she told me you would have took her. That's not true, you know that. I hope so. At Tribal Council, Jeff is asking Steven and Aaron why they should go to the final two over the other person. And Steven lays out his case, which is partially an emotional one. And something that hasn't happened until this episode is Jeff making Steven look dumb in front of the whole jury. And you know, I gotta admit, when you weigh a million dollars versus a breakfast with your 39 day friend, you're right, that's a tough you know one. That? Aaron, you might be best off saying nothing at all. Steven might be making a better case for you than you can make <laughs> for yourself. Damn. Jeff is going really hard on Steven here. But in the end, JT stays true to his alliance with Steven and votes out Aaron. Aaron, the tribe has spoken. It is now the final day of the game and JT and Steven get to celebrate with their breakfast that Steven has been craving. And uh, what is said next is still true as of the time of this video. So you and I are gonna be friends for life. Hugely satisfying to be here with JT at the end. Before final tribal council, Steven takes the opportunity to reflect back on his day one thoughts about JT as he recalls not thinking the two would ever get along, but that has been completely flipped on its head. My first impression of JT was, you know, we're not going to get along, but I was totally wrong about JT. He might be the good old boy from the South, but he has ended up being the person whose mind has worked most like my own. And that to me is really surprising that in spite of our completely different backgrounds, our minds seem to work totally in sync. We have changed for the better. Uh, you know, don't judge a book by its cover, obviously. And uh, don't go off first impressions. Outside of the country guy and the city guy, you know, when it comes down to it, we're a lot alike. <laughs> It is time, final, tribal, Council. Will the jury choose the easy win in JT who has charmed them all with his social game? Or will Steven be given credit as the brains of the Jalapau 3 Alliance that ended up running the game? Let's find out. Steven starts Final Tribal with an opening speech of questionable choices. Mainly, he takes the journeyman approach and says, wow, he really had to grow in this game to do all that he did, whereas JT was already prepared before even playing. But uh, Steven doesn't really address why he deserves the million more than JT. I mean, it's obviously hard to talk you know against JT now and to sort of compare myself to him since we have been through so much together but I kind of want to focus maybe on not what we brought into the game but what we've taken out of the game and you know I came into the game extremely uncomfortable in my own skin you know I'd never been camping before so I think my road has been a lot harder. JT starts off with a good opening speech that includes him reminding everyone he is a poor cattle rancher who is the first in his family to graduate college, but he is definitely not looking for any pity votes. He says he got to this point in the game by working hard and sticking his neck out, and yet despite sticking his neck out and everyone knowing that he's a threat, he received zero votes against him all game. He tells the jury he feels like he made friends with them all, and he picks Steven to go to the end because he felt like Steven deserved it more than Aaron, who he knew he could easily beat if he had brought her. I'm obviously not a Yale graduate or English major or anything. My buddy Steven here. I'm uh, actually the first person in my family to ever graduate college. And to make friends with you guys, I mean, it was very hard to vote you guys out. The way we picked who we voted off was the people that we thought were going to vote us off. And had we not gotten rid of you, you'd be sitting where I'm at today. And I'd be over there, there's no doubt about it. Brendan is the first juror, and he asked Steven pretty much what I just said. Why Steven's growth arc more valuable than JT just being flat out good? Should he be given some sort of handicap like they do in bowling? Steven says he played in the shadows as an under the radar threat, but he is completely misreading what Brendan wants. And let's be honest, we literally saw Brendan earlier in the season say that he just wants to give the million to JT. And JT also dunks on Steven in the process. You know, JT is an amazing outdoorsman. I came in with none of these skills. I still persevered and will be leaving the game with many of them. Growth is irrelevant, really. I mean, that's something you can carry home with you. That's something that's good for you personally, but obviously, you know, 
if you go to a football game and just because it was harder for you to catch the ball and you catch it doesn't make it better than the person that already knew how to catch it. Erin is next and this is very telling about where she is as a juror as she asks a question that completely pins Steven with guilt for betraying all of his alliances and somehow Erin ignores how JT did the same exact thing to the same people. It's secretly brilliant somehow. Almost everyone in every one of those alliances is on the jury. So should I just vote for JT? Debbie is third and she asks JT who he really is since she thought he was great until he turned on her. He uses a great emotional tactic that works wonders on Debbie, who is a mother herself. Debbie, I'll be honest with you. When I come into this game, my mother told me, do not believe what everybody tells you. You're gonna have to lie to win this game. She asks Steven what choice he would have made if he won final immunity, which he says, I, I don't know and I never made that decision. Yeah, that Look, look, That's not good. Nope. Stop. Now, this is not good enough for Debbie. She wants the truth. She wants an answer. So Steven fesses up. I hope I would have taken JT. My fear is that I would have chosen Aaron if it had come down to it. Thank you. Coach is fourth and he asked JT how he lived up to being the noble warrior. And JT says that he stuck to his word with coach. Not true at all, but he focuses on the one time that he did stay true to his word when he voted for Aaron like he said he would even though he knew coach was going home. JT even says he would have been proud of coach sitting next to him at final two and he's really stroking coach's ego in just the perfect way while also playing victim to Steven. Cause I knew you'd have taken me to the final two. Uh, you know, I thought Steven would, um, but you know, I just found out otherwise. Steven then attempts to show the truth that JT is blowing smoke up coach's butt. However, this backfires hard. I never took the weasel way out and JT knew you were getting a limit. I don't wanna, I'm not gonna make I that told comparison, I'm sorry. Sierra is the next juror and she says she has no questions for Steven but calls him a sweetheart. Ouch. But then, while asking her question to JT, she basically says exactly what she thinks of Steven's game. And for JT, what does taking the strongest really mean to you because you're standing with one of the weakest players I've ever seen. This is really a bloodbath that Steven can't do anything about to escape. Tyson is next to last and he is ready to provoke a fight as he asked JT if Steven was an asset to him getting to the end of the game. JT says he was, but he could have gotten to the end without Steven. Now JT could be right, we'll never know for sure, but I think his answer is underselling Steven a lot. Steven was a lot more valuable than JT's letting on, but this is Final Tribal Council and the goal is to win the million, not to make your partner crime look good. Could I do it without him? I feel like I, I could have made this adventure without him, but I don't think it would have been near as easy. Steven, you want to reply to that? Taj is the final juror, and she says she feels hurt by both of these guys and wonders if eliminating her at the final four was really all that important. We then get the one time all final tribal that Steven attempts to do what JT has been doing to him the whole time, and it backfires. JT had been talking about taking you out next for a while. I had wanted to keep you around until three. And part of that was because it would be a great statement for the Jalapau 3 to end up, you know, facing this entire Timbira jury. Is this Thank the same guy I brought with me? Yes. What are you, oh, come on now. You've been slandering me all night, and I have, I, this is the first time I ever took a shot at you. And JT says that is actually not the case at all. Voting for Taj was extremely hard for him. In fact, it was the hardest vote he made all game. Taj, there was nothing effortless about putting your name down. The hardest vote I made in this game was voting you out. Todd, I've stuck my neck out for you this whole game as well as you for me. We've been like brother and sister. I mean, it was, it was almost harder than my vote last night. It is so clear who the jury favors, and JT does put on a great final tribal council performance as a result. We then cut to the live show, and for the first time in Survivor history, we see the bow wrapped up on a perfect game. First vote, JT. Second vote. The warrior, JT. JT, the winner of Survivor yeah. Time. Yeah. In a lot of ways, one without the other doesn't succeed with the same amount of success this season. JT can claim all he wants in that final tribal council that he still reaches the end, and maybe he does. But it took him and Steven to pull the wool over the Timbira tribe's eyes to do everything they did. Both of them together were able to suss out all the lies that the other tribe was feeding them. Had it just been one person trying to suss it out by themselves, who really knows if they would have done it? No duo before them played as impressive a game unless you count Rob and Amber, and there is only one duo since them who I think 
comes even close, but that is for another time and another season. And just in case you are wondering what happens with these two people after this season, they are still good friends to this day. JT got married in 2015 with Steven officiating their wedding. And in 2018, Steven got married with JT at his wedding too. As for them both returning on Survivor, let's just say JT plays two more times and makes some big moves. And Steven plays one more time and frankly, his second time feels like a direct sequel to this season in a lot of ways. Thanks for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.